At the time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. I will maintain by, I will maintain all, the by all means in my power the honour and the noble traditions I of the medical profession. I will give to profession. my teachers the respect and gratitude that is their due. And, and I will gladly share my knowledge with those who are to follow. My colleagues will be my sisters and brothers. I'll I will practice my profession my with conscience and dignity. The health of my patient, the health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me, even after the patient has died. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability. disability creed, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, social standing or any other factor or any to, other intervene factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. Our third year, which is uh, 1967, Peter Sinclair and I were sort of talking about where we might do our clinical training. We knew the Austin was uh, starting up as a new clinical school and that sounded interesting. So we got into his old Cortina and drove out to Heidelberg and had a look. I think through my training, I was very interested in neurology and neurosurgery, but I realised that as a neurosurgeon, half your patients would never wake up and talk to you again. And ophthalmology was a very exciting challenge. To give people vision is almost biblical. My wife also graduated at the same time and we had a six month old daughter. I went on to do a residency at the Austin and I arrived at the, uh, at the residency with the child and said, where will I put her? And they looked quite stunned and said, what do you mean? And I said, I have a child, I need somewhere to put her. And everybody pitched in and helped to look after that child during that year. So it, it, was, uh, it was a bonding experience. I learnt uh, patience uh, when I was at the Austin and when uh, the other people were there at the time. There was a big hole in the ground that was going to be a new building. And that new building was going to appear every 10 minutes. And in fact, nothing happened the whole time uh, I was there as a student. Uh, the building was still a hole in the ground. The group of us that went out to the Austin in 1977 were regarded as the adventurous bunch. When uh, the presentations were made in third year to the group at the University of Melbourne about choosing clinical schools, Austin was regarded as the country club. I now have the privilege of teaching the next generation of medical students. And one of the things I always say to them is don't feel like you need to be defined by the failures of your past. Having not performed so well in the basic academic uh, studies of the first three years, once I came into clinical medicine, it was such an extraordinary place to be placed for the first time working with patients and doing clinical work. And I guess it was one of the first times that I realised, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to be a doctor. So in the 90s when I was studying here, the Austin Clinical School was on the fourth floor. There was an office area where we had um, at the time Professor Sweet, um, Dr Goss as well in the clinical school. And then attached to that was a large lecture theatre that we used to have our lectures in. Probably I think in the afternoons in those days we used to have lectures. I think really in the presence of my mentors and supervisors and my colleagues and the other students is really learning how to be compassionate and having empathy. So in my final year of medicine, I traveled to, to Swaziland on a medical elective. When I came back to the Austin, my mentors and teachers were so receptive and so open to my experience that they really engendered in me uh, a sense of, of purpose, that I could change the trajectory of my career with what I had experienced. Just realizing that it's not just about treating a patient or their numbers, but it's about treating the patient as a whole person um, and thinking about other things apart from just the disease they've come in with and observing other doctors here and observing our supervisors. You know, a lot of those things come from the very start and I feel really grateful that I had a, such a good foundation here for that. Knowing that your tutor had put in hard work to teach you, uh, when you were doing ward rounds and presenting to them, that, that felt like a, more of a judgment call. So if you if you actually were told you'd done well, it was a huge relief and you thought, actually, I think I am going to be able to be a doctor. The clinicians, the consultants, were young and excited and absolutely committed and there wasn't a stuffy hierarchy. It was a 
sense of a team. There was a dynamism, there was a can-do, and I think that excitement has continued. I think what grabbed me at the beginning and I held for the rest of my time there was you entered a family, you entered the Austin family. That we had parents, which was Bernie Sweet, uh, and we had our, our siblings, which were our groups. And that family atmosphere lasted for the entire time I was there, and to be honest, persists to this day. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 1982. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 1977. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 2006. I was in the Austin Clinical School in 1967. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 1968. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 1975. I started at the Austin Clinical School in 1987. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 1995. I was at the Austin Clinical School in 2005. I started at the Austin Clinical School in 2004.